Today, we're going to answer the question. We're going to get the real definition. We're going to really kind of figure out what in the world is the VWAP. The VWAP. V W A V W A P. I think V. I'm saying it right, right? This is correct. VWAP. What is the VWAP when it comes to the stock market, day trading, and all that fun stuff? Talking about it in this video. So, if you want to find out, you you better stay tuned. So we use the VWAP a lot, and you know we talk about it. And a lot of people base their trades off it, but do people really know the real definition of what the VWAP is and how it works? Well, let's ask Google the exact definition here. Google, tell me. Google, tell me. Can I can I do that? Search by voice. What is VWAP? What is VWAP? Oh, no, no, not VWAP. Go back. What is V? No, I can't do it. There's what is V? What is love? What is love? All right, just screw it. We're gonna do it just the old school way. What is VWAP? Investopedia. What is the volume weighted average price? The volume weighted average price is a trading benchmark used especially in pension plans. Oh, little do we know. Look at that. So the volume weighted average price. The VWAP is calculated by adding up the dollars traded for every transaction's price multiplied by numbers of shares traded and then divided by the total shares traded for the day. Holy crap, that seems like a lot of uh, math and a lot of work. VWAP is a ratio generally used by institutional investors and mutual funds to make buys and sells so as to not disturb the market price with large orders. It is the average share price of the stock weighted against its trading volume within a particular time frame, generally one day. So why should we use the VWAP? Large institutional buyers and mutual funds use the VWAP ratio to be able to move into stocks in a way that it will not disturb the natural market dynamics of a stock price. If these buyers were to move into a position all at once, it would unnaturally elevate the stock price. Yet buying purchasing shares under the intraday VWAP moving average, these buyers can move into a stock over the course of a day or two without too much of a price disruption disruption. However, there are other uses for the VWAP. One strategy is to purchase a stock for individual investors just as the VWAP pierces the intraday VWAP moving average, as this can indicate a momentum shift in the share price. It is also used in algo trading and allows brokers to guarantee the execution of a trade near a certain price volume for clients. So VWAP is a cumulative indicator and as such, the number of data points it increases throughout the day. The increasing data set over longer periods of time, such as four, six, or eight hours in a day, can cause lag between the VWAP moving average and the actual VWAP. As such, most investors never use a VWAP longer than one day. So really, the VWAP is a mathematical equation. By adding up the dollars traded for every transaction and then divided by total shares traded for the day. So it's basically giving you a kind of average on you know this where the stock's moving what it's doing and a lot of people trade off of it as a support a lot of people trade off it sometimes as a resistance and you can see you know checking out apple right now it's having some issues at the vwap area so that 193 area got the vwap the vwap is this white line on my chart so obviously when you get big massive moves the stock's going to get more extended off of the vwap and you know going to be kind of bouncing around there a lot of times you'll get these big moves the stock will move back to the view app and then start to move higher just really depending on you know how the stock is trading and things like that but i think a lot of the stocks that we trade a lot of the crazy stocks that we trade i'm not sure that there's a lot of institutional investors sitting there trying to load up their portfolios with these stocks that we trade i think the view app is uh, you know more used on these larger cap stocks on people that are you know swing trading who are buying to invest but a lot of the really kind of crazy stocks that we're trading, I'm not sure the VWAP app really is like a great tool just because it just doesn't work so much on the smaller time frames. On the larger time frames for swing trading, stuff like that, I think the VWAP app is much more uh, pronounced and more important. But really when it comes to trading, you know, these crazy stocks that we trade, uh, the VWAP app can be hit or miss. A lot of times you don't have, like I said, that resistance will kick in at the VWAP app or they'll find support. So people who are trading, they might be looking at the view app. They're kind of trading off of it. But I think, you know, overall, it's just kind of a weird thing when it comes to these small cap crazy movers. You know, most of the time, these big crazy movers really don't care about 
the overall you know chart what's on the chart they don't care about the rsi they don't care about the emas they just do crazy things but when it comes to the overall market and the larger cap stocks the vwap is going to be a lot more important but still i think it's a good tool to have on your chart in case you know other people are looking at the vwap why not so if people are looking at the vwap if people if people are looking at the vwap if people are looking at that support maybe a resistance area like oh there's the vwap it's at you know like this you know the vwap's at 192 Oh, it breaks above it. Okay, now that's bullish. It's looking pretty good. And you can see how this is moving higher from there. And all this kind of EMA is lining up there. Everything looking good. It's kind of interesting because you can see here earlier, you know, it broke above the VWAP and then sold back off. So it's interesting to see kind of how the stocks interact with these uh, indicators and moving averages, stuff like that. Over time, you'll kind of figure out, you know, what works best for you, what indicator is best for your style of trading. And that's really what it comes down to. It doesn't really come down to, uh, you know, what person on the internet told you what to use but really you'll just kind of figure out you know this works best for your setup or just kind of works best for you trading and that's kind of what it comes down to the vwap so there you have it we got a little bit better of an idea of what it is it's really just a mathematical equation you know just adding up the dollars traded for every transaction price multiplied number of shares of traded and then dividing by the total shares traded for the day so Try to do the math on that. Try to do the math by hand. Just try to figure out the v where the view app should be by doing all these numbers of, I, I bet you can't do it. But the computers, luckily, the computers, the brokers can do it for us. But it is interesting to see kind of how the view app does affect different stocks. The larger cap stocks are going to kind of follow the view app a little bit better. You can see like Apple, you know, really kind of got away from the view app and then boom, comes back up there and then kind of, you know, flirts with it, flirts with it and then starts to move higher from there. And it's kind of interesting to see how that plays out. So there it is, kind of a better understanding of what the volume weighted price average is and how you can use it. I think a lot of times, like I said, you know, with the larger stocks, if you're going to be buying the dips, you're looking for that, you know, where's the VWAP at? Where should I be buying at? If I'm looking to short or stuff like that and kind of looking for that VWAP to hold as support. So let's say I'm trying to buy right now here on Apple and, uh, you know, I can obviously see that that resistance is there. What am I going to do? I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait and see if I can get above the VWAP. We can find some support and then let that VWAP, let the EMAs turn into support. And then that'll kind of be where I want to buy at. And also, you know, you'll get these kind of big sell-offs. And when the stock gets really far away from all the moving averages from the VWAP, you'll normally get a little bit of a bounce back, you know, back up to kind of the median. So you get this kind of big move down and then it's like, okay, okay, we're getting a little crazy here. The stock needs to move back up there. And then once it moves back up there, you can kind of look for opportunities. So when you see a stock that's really just kind of selling off and really kind of getting far away from the view app and stuff like that, this could be a dip by opportunity. But that's not to say that the stock won't turn off later on. Normally, you know, like I said, the stock gets overextended on both ways. So if the stock's going up higher, it gets overextended, it usually pulls back to the view app, stuff like that. If a stock is selling off, it usually pulls back to the view app if it's below it. So I give an idea of how to use it so there it is hopefully it helps you guys and uh, you know you can apply this to your day trading and uh, your swing trading <laughs>